Psalms chapter 51 and verse 12. I want you to notice something because I've often heard the scripture read and even myself been guilty of it. I'm misquoting a couple of words in this scripture. I'm going to read out the New King James Version. And it says this, Restore to me the joy of your, not my, but your salvation. Aren't you glad we do receive and it becomes ours, but it's always his. Verse, and uphold me by your generous or willing spirit. Lord, restore to me the joy of your salvation. When we get a hold of his, it makes us be different. Amen. Amen. Father, anoint me to preach thy word. We thank you for it and we praise you for it. And help us to receive it in the name of Jesus. And the church said, Amen. Amen. I want to preach to you upon the obvious title. Restore the joy of your salvation. Restore the joy of your salvation salvation. David had some major flaws, which could have doomed uh, anyone, but the master worked on him. I don't know about you, but I'm glad he's still working on me. I'm glad he hasn't given up on me. I give up on him a lot quicker than he gives up on me. Can you say amen to that? But David had some major flaws, but God was working on him. And Psalms 51 tells us how sin almost wrecked him. But it also instructs us uh, by example how to repent. Everybody say, repent. One of the hardest words or two words to say, or maybe three words, is I was wrong. Everybody say that with me. I was wrong. And sometimes it's hard to say that, but my friends, sometimes we're wrong. Amen? Amen? Right. Sometimes uh, we do mess up. And sometimes we do need to repent. Sometimes we do need to say, I'm sorry. Amen. There's more grace in that than there is in trying to prove you're right. Can you say amen? Amen. But David, uh, amen, shows us in the Psalms uh, how Christ will forgive and restore our salvation. Friend, you may have walked in here today. You may have walked in here lost. Or you walked in here and you're contemplating walking away from this Christian experience. uh, Or this Christian uh, plan. uh, Or this Bible thing that you preachers talk about. Or you may have walked in here and you've begun that journey already. That you've turned away from God and you're close. The slowly just feeling his presence less and less and less. Uh, you may have walked in here and been done wrong or done wrong, uh, and you're hurting inside. Uh, but I'm telling you, down deep inside, God hears that cry. Nobody else may see it. Uh, no one else may uh, not hear it. But God hears your cry, and I'm telling you, He can do something about it. If you believe that, give Him a hand clap of praise. Number one, I want to preach to you about God's help. I'm glad he's my helper. Amen. Amen. In other words, I need God's help. Quit thinking you can handle, you know, we do the man thing. I can handle it. About last week when I could handle the deer stand and I kissed a tree about five foot all the way down to the ground. (laughs) Amen. I thank God that he took care of me. (laughs) Well, you got scraped up. Yeah, I could have been a whole lot worse. But aren't you glad God helps us? David is confronted. If you want to find out the story in 2 Samuel chapter number 12, Nathan comes to uh, David and he begins to tell him a story about an injustice and and how that that, uh, one that had uh, could have helped one that did not have anything. Uh, And David was angry uh, and uh, he said, let me take care of it. Uh, And Nathan looked at him and said, you're the man I'm talking about. You're the one that's done 
done wrong. You're the murderer. You're the adulterer. You're the one that's lied. You're the man who has sinned. David cries out in Psalm chapter 51 and verse 1. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to your loving kindness. According to the multitude of your tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. I'm so glad that when you called on his name and you asked him to forgive you, he wipes it clear. Come on, he wipes the saint clean. Can you give him praise? David starts first. He said, Lord, I need mercy. Amen. How many's ever need mercy? Amen. You see, if it wasn't for grace and mercy, all of us would be in hell. If not, well, all of us would be very close to it. Thank God for his mercy. Come on, thank God for his mercy. When someone needs mercy and you've got the opportunity to give it or not give it, give it where you like it or not. Because someday you might need mercy, amen? Oh, but you see, David said, have mercy upon me. Uh, amen. It starts, Lord, I need your grace. Uh, repentance. Uh, when repentance comes, restoration comes. Uh, Lord, forgive me. Uh, you see, the Lord cares about us. Uh, amen. Friend, deeply, even when we are far from him, he still cares. Uh, and he still loves us. Uh, that's why it keeps pulling on the road. He says, come back home. Somebody walked in here and needs to hear this. What David said, Lord, I've messed up. Is anyone in this room ever messed up? <laughs> How many will say, Pastor, I've messed up. Come on, I've did wrong. <laughs> but aren't you glad he can set you free? You see, the Lord, I'm telling you of all my heart, I know God spoke to my heart today to preach this message and to bring to my attention about, he says, your salvation. At this moment, David could not save himself. David could not change him. David had given to lust. He'd given the willing to murder. He was be given the willing to, to lie. He was willing to hide things and have secret sins. His salvation could not change him. And he said, Lord, will you restore that joy of your salvation? That'll set me free. Uh, and I'll walk out of here with the power of God in my life and redeemed. If you believe that, give him praise right now. You see, Psalms 51 and 7 says, A broken spirit. And a contrite heart will God not refuse. Uh, John wrote this in 1 John chapter number 2 and verse 1. My little children, these things I write to you uh, so you, you may not sin. Uh, and if anyone sins, uh, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. Uh, and he himself is the preparation for our sins. Uh, not for ours only, but also for the whole world. In other words, uh, David, wash my sins away, Lord. Uh, Blot out my, amen, uh, my ungodliness. Uh, amen. Put my name in the book of remembrance uh, and put my sins upon the cross. Amen. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 12 says, But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down at the right hand of God. Amen. That's the power of the cross. That's the power of the cross. When we are stained with sin and when uh, we are broken, the blood of Jesus will wash us uh, white as snow. Uh, when we're all messed up, he can make us whole again. Uh, when we're bound by chains, uh, they will be broken. Uh, we just sung the song, Amazing Grace, uh, how sweet the sound. Uh, and then we go and the chains are broken uh, and they are gone. Uh, I don't know about you, but I'm glad I walked in here free. Uh, and if you didn't walk in here free, uh, you can walk out of here free uh, by the blood of Jesus. Christ. Uh, come on, give him praise, church. Amen. Now let me note something here. David had once was walking right. And the moment that he, he wrote this Psalms, he was declaring to you that he was going in the wrong direction. And he cried out to God. Somebody needs to hear this this morning. You may be tempted about ready to give up, but I'm telling you, God wants to give you what you need. He loves you. Can you shout amen? 
Come on, church. Uh, amen. Let me put it this way. At 1 John 1 and 7. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with the one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. We can lose out if we're not careful. The second thing I want to talk to you about this morning is this. David was basically saying, I have sinned. I was wrong. In Psalms 51 and verse 3, For I acknowledge my transgression, and my sins are always before me. Against you, you have I only have I sinned uh, and done this evil in your sight that you may be fa- that you may be found just when you speak uh, and blameless when you judge uh, David said I've sinned against you father Lord I realize I've committed uh, these sins uh, I realize I've been living uh, in adultery I realize I've covered coveted my neighbor's wife I realize uh, that I've stolen uh, and David says I'm responsible I realize I've done wrong. And the moment he realized that he done wrong is the moment God would be able to change him and to set him free. Come on, somebody. Don't worry about what people think. Let me tell you something. Don't worry about what people think. Quit worrying about what they say about you because it's not going to matter. It's the one that you face, amen, in eternal, amen, forever is the one that you need to be concerned about. It's not the one down the street that you're trying to impress. It's not the one that you have tried to be like and you want everybody to like you. That's not the one you need to worry about or to be concerned about. But it's Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. And he says, whosoever come to me, I will in no wise cast out. You see, you don't have to drive a Chevy to impress Jesus. It helps. <laughs> you don't have to root for the Razorbacks. Boy, it didn't help any last night, did it? You see, just like I imagine, I'm going to use that for a moment. Could you imagine? The regrets of not running on fourth and inches. Now think about this. God has laid on my heart to tell somebody today that even though you have failed God or you're contemplating it, you don't have to leave here with regrets. You don't have to. Lay it all on the altar. Can you shout amen? Amen. You see, how we do that, we start getting less involved. So don't back off. Get more involved. Get more involved in the house of God and in worship. Don't separate yourself away from those that will pray for you. And Well, that makes me feel bad. Get closer to them. Let the Holy Spirit talk to you. Let God be real to you. Don't miss out. Amen. If you've done wrong, admit it. That makes you greater than lesser. Can you shout amen? I mean, it's hard for me to tell my wife that I am wrong and she's right. I have to really work on it sometimes. How about you guys? (laughs) How about you ladies? Isn't it hard for you to say it's wrong? I know at least one lady in this place. (laughs) <laughs> Come on. But aren't you glad that when you are, I've messed up. I forget, Lord, forgive me. I've sinned. I've done wrong. Come on, somebody. David, think about it. If he could have backed up a few moments. When he began, when the first time he walked out on the top of the roof uh, uh, or out of his palace and there was Bathsheba over there bathing and he, and he saw her and, 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 and it was innocent at that moment uh, and, he began, and, and yet he did not walk away and he figured out the time that every time she would go to bathe uh, that he would be out there and he would watch her and then he, he, he uh, goes beyond watching. He goes in, in, in his palace and he begins to think about it. Uh, he's starting to scoot away. He's not praying like he should. He's not 
not in the battle like you, he should be. He's not reading the Word like he should. He's not getting to church like he should. He's slowly getting further away from his source. And then he makes the mistake of sending a messenger to bring her. And then he tries to put the, her husband out in the front lines. Or he tries, uh, oh, come on church, uh, you know the story. Think about it. Uh, amen, my friend. God wants you to know that he loves you. Uh, and he loves you who you are. And if you walked in today and you feel like I can't make it anymore, God will see you through. Give him a hand clap of praise. <laughs> you see, but when we're sinning, we usually justify what we're doing. Are y'all with me? I mean, I mean, David sent, Nath God sent Nathaniel. And when David took responsibility and he quit blaming others, that's when the beginning of his turnaround started. I believe somebody this morning come and need him, come in this place needing a turnaround. If we'll obey God and put God first, uh, you see, uh, if we had known, uh, hey man, think about it. Uh, if we'd have known, we'd have done different. But my friend, you're contemplating, uh, or maybe you feel like you failed God, uh, or you're blaming somebody else, uh, or you're justifying. Uh, but when David finally got it, hey man, he said, God, you're right, and I'm wrong. Uh, I that's when God began to move in his life. Can you give him praise right now? Now I realize that this type of preaching is not always popular. You know, it's not the, the thing of today. Don't tell me what I'm doing wrong. Just tell me what I want to hear. Are y'all with me? But I want you to know you won't be free. Come on, we can live in His freedom and in His power and His anointing. Amen. And in His Word. And there's something about it. Even when I'm having a bad day and I'm struggling and the enemy's coming against me, I'm still free. Even whenever I get disappointing news, I'm still free. Even when everybody else around me has forsaken me, I'm still free. Even whenever, amen, the enemy comes in like a flood and the Lord lifts up a standard against you, I'm still free. Come on, somebody. You can and make it. Well, thirdly, God's future. I challenge you to desire His plan, His way. David said, Lord, I want what you've got. He said, how do you know, Pastor? Create in me a clean and new heart. Psalms 51 and verse 10. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. David realized his heart was unclean, uh, and he wept bitterly over it. Uh, and he begins to realize he can't fix it. Uh, he can't fix this problem. Uh, he tried to hide uh, the fact that Bathsheba was pregnant uh, with his child. He tried to hide the fact that he killed uh, Bathsheba's husband uh, but God knew uh, and God brought it to his attention uh, but aren't you glad uh, that when he called uh, upon the Lord he said Lord have mercy upon me uh, and make me a new creation uh, give me a new heart a new desire a new way of living uh, a new walk uh, quit me, uh, help me quit blaming others uh, and just help me look to you Lord because uh, I know you'll give me what I need 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Amen. Notice, we need to quit listening to what people say we are and start listening to who, what God says we are. <laughs> hmm, to some people, I'm a half-breed. To some people, I'm a Bible thumper. I've never thumped my Bible one time. I've thumped Pat, uh, my child's head a couple of times. I, I, I'm preaching from my heart today. Because I want people to know we can be free. This old world puts out a lot of junk. And there's right now there's more cynicism than I've ever seen in my life. We don't know who's telling the truth. We don't know what's real news and fake news. 
It seems like everybody's dirty and everybody's guilty. But I'm telling you, not everybody's dirty and not everybody's guilty. What do you name? For whosoever called on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And when I call on him and he's redeemed me, I'm no longer guilty because Jesus took my sins. I'm no longer dirty because he covered me with the blood of rock. Come on, somebody. Amen. I want God. Amen. A new person. God gave David a new identity, no longer a murderer, a liar, or a doctor, but redeemed and a victor. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. I have been crucified with Christ. It's no longer, I, longer who I live, but Christ that lives in me. Amen. And the life which I now live in flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Uh, amen. That's what I'm becoming and that's what I desire. David said, don't cast me. You ought to read the whole chapter. Lord, don't cast me away from your presence. Uh, hey, my friend, think about it. In hell, my friend, we'll never be able to feel the loving presence of God. God's presence will be there, but it won't be like you can feel it right now. Uh, God, don't take me away from your presence. Uh, keep me there if you do, Lord. I can't make it. If you don't help me, it's hopeless. Amen. Restore the joy of your salvation. Come on, church. Let God put joy back in your soul. Give him praise right now. If you'll hang on, I'll be done in about an hour. I was just teasing. He said, Lord, hold me up. With your generous, your willing, your voluntary, magnificent, noble presence. In other words, God wants to. He wants to hang with you. He wants to love on you. And he knows everything about you. Let's think about that. There's... Five books. What we hear about in Revelations is the book of life. There's a few other books. There's the, there's the book of, uh, you know, he, he knows every deed you've done. He knows the public deeds we've done. He knows the secret deeds we've done. Aren't you glad he washes them away? Oh, God, you know everything about me. Hey, man, you know every thought I've had. Amen. And would you hold me up with your spirit? The Bible tells us in Genesis 2 and 7, And the Lord God formed the man of the dust of the, of the ground and breathed to him his nostrils a breath of life, and man became a, a living soul. Uh, amen. God, let your breath breathe in me. Uh, let your Holy Spirit come in me because it makes me alive. Uh, when you give your heart to Jesus, uh, you're no longer dead, but you are alive. Uh, Job put it this way in 33 and verse 4. The Spirit Spirit of God has made me, and the breath of the Almighty gives me life. He indwells me. He empowers me. Uh, come on, somebody. Do you desire virtue with the Lord? Uh, do you desire victory? Uh, do you desire peace? Uh, then come to Jesus. Uh, he will set you free. Come on, somebody. David said, restore the joy, the gladness, the cheerfulness. The joy of my of your salvation, his rescue, his deliverance, his redemption, his prosperity. When we confess our sins, he cleanses us from all sin. Amen. And restore. David said, restore. What does that mean, Pastor? It means to give back. Put me in the rightful place. What the enemy took, God brings back. Oh, I don't know about you. In other words, let me put it this way. You'll be recovered, you'll be refreshed, and you'll be set again. <laughs> so if you walked in here thinking about giving up, or maybe you've even given up, and you've just, I'm going to make church one more time. I'm challenging you to call on the Lord. Amen. Will he? Will he really forgive me? Hosea chapter 14 and verse 4. And team, would you come? Here's what it says. 
I will heal their backsliding. I will love them freely. Oh, if I had time to dissect that word freely. Can I talk to you for just a minute? He says, I will love them freely. You see, sometimes when people do things for you, there's always, well, what's in it for you? What do you want? What do I owe you? God says, I'll forgive you, and I'll love you without any strings attached. You don't have to love me back. I sure want you to, but I'll love you just like you are. How many's glad he'll love me just like we are? So he said, I will heal their backsliding. I will love them freely. My anger has turned away from him. In other words, I could judge him. I could sentence him. I could condemn him. I could punish him. But instead, I'm going to hear that call. Lord, restore unto me your salvation. I've messed up. I've been slacking. I've been giving in. But I realize it's not working. So will you restore me? Will you create in me a new heart? Will you not take your presence from me? Because if you will, I will teach transgressor their ways. I will proclaim your love to somebody. Friend, God loves you. And one way you know that he loves you is he's real with you and he don't play with you. When you're wrong, he talks to you. Amen? He'll kind of start tugging at your heart. He'll kind of napping, knocking on your heart a little bit. And sometimes, some of us take a slap in the back of the head, don't we? But aren't you glad he does? Prayer team, would you come? Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you for your presence and your glory. I thank you for your anointing and your love. I pray you'll touch somebody today. You'll change somebody today. You'll give somebody hope today. Let every head bowed and every eye remain closed. And would everyone stand, please? Now listen to me as every head bowed, every eye closed. We're family here. We're not going to think a thing if you're struggling or you need encouragement or you need someone to put your arm, their arm around you or you're simply saying, I messed up and I need to get back to God. That's what this place is for. So if this message is spoke to you, I could have you raise your hand. But I tell you what I want you to do. Pastor, I love God, but I, 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 I've been struggling. I've been backing off. Or I'm not where I ought to be. Or I'm lost. I'm cold in my soul, and I need to get it back in there. I want you to come right now. Don't worry about what people think. I want to stir it in my heart. I want God to revive me. I want God to change me. I want God to bless me. I want God to talk to me. I need God to help me. I need encouragement today. Is there more? To the, I'm going to wait just a second. Don't worry. Pastor, I need God to uplift me. I've been letting things in my life I shouldn't. I want God to help me not let them in there. Is there somebody else that would come? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I surrender all. 
All right, church, look at me. If uh, you wouldn't mind, we got plenty of time. Would you find your place to pray? Come around the front before you leave. Let's use these altars today. Grab somebody by the hand or tap them on the shoulder and say, will you come with me? Let's pray together. God bless the church. Hmm, to some people, I'm a half-breed. To some people, I'm a Bible thumper. I've never thumped my Bible one time. I've thumped Pat, uh, my child's head a couple of times. I, I, I'm preaching from my heart today. Because I want people to know that we can be free. This old world puts out a lot of junk. And there's right now, there's more cynicism than I've ever seen in my life. We don't know who's telling the truth. We don't know what's real news and fake news. It seems like everybody's dirty and everybody's guilty. But I'm telling you, not everybody's dirty and not everybody's guilty. What do you name? For whosoever called on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And when I call on him and he's redeemed me, I'm no longer guilty because Jesus took my sins. I'm no longer dirty because he covered me with the blood of a rock. Come on, somebody. Amen. I want God. Amen. A new person. God gave David a new identity, no longer a murderer, a liar, or a adulterer, but redeemed and a victor. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. I have been crucified with Christ. It's no longer, I, longer who I live, but Christ that lives in me. Amen. And the life which I now live in flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Uh, amen. That's what I'm becoming and that's what I desire. David said, don't cast me. You ought to read the whole chapter. Lord, don't cast me away from your presence. Uh, hey, my friend, think about it. In hell, my friend, we'll never be able to feel the loving presence of God. God's presence will be there but it won't be like you can feel it right now. Uh, God, don't take me away from your presence. Uh, keep me there if you do, Lord. Uh, I can't make it out. If you don't help me, it's hopeless. Amen. Restore the joy of your salvation. Come on, church. Let's God put joy back in your soul. Give him praise right now. If you'll hang on, I'll be done in about an hour. I was just teasing. <laughs> he said, Lord, hold me up. With your generous, your willing, your voluntary, magnificent, noble presence. In other words, God wants to. He wants to hang with you. He wants to love on you. And he knows everything about you. Let's think about that. There's five books. What we hear about in Revelations is the book of life. There's a few other books. There's the, there's the book of, uh, you know, he, he knows every deed you've done. He knows the public deeds we've done. He knows the secret deeds we've done. Aren't you glad he washes them away? Oh, God, you know everything about me. Hey, man, you know every thought I've had. Hey, man, and would you hold me up with your spirit? The Bible tells us in Genesis 2 and 7, And the Lord God formed the man of the dust of the, of the ground and breathed to him his nostrils a breath of life, and man became a, a living soul. Uh, amen. God, let your breath breathe in me. Uh, let your Holy Spirit come in me because it makes me alive. Uh, when you give your heart to Jesus, uh, you're no longer dead, but you are alive. Uh, Job put it this way in 33 and verse 4. The Spirit Spirit of God has made me, and the breath of the Almighty gives me life. He indwells me. He empowers me. Uh, come on, somebody. Do you desire virtue with the Lord? Uh, do you desire victory? Uh, do you desire peace? Uh, then come to Jesus. Uh, he will set you free. Come on, somebody. David said, restore the joy, the gladness, the cheerfulness. The joy of, my, of your salvation, his rescue, his deliverance, his redemption, 
His prosperity. When we confess our sins, He cleanses us from all sin. Amen? And restore. David said restore. What does it mean, Pastor? It means to give back. Put me in the rightful place. What the enemy took, God brings back. Oh, I don't know about you. In other words, let me put it this way. You'll be recovered, you'll be refreshed, and you'll be set again. <laughs> so if you walked in here thinking about giving up, or maybe you've even given up, and you've just, I'm going to make church one more time. I'm tell, challenging you to call on the Lord. Amen. Will he? Will he really forgive me? Hosea chapter 14 and verse 4. Team, would you come? Here's what it says. I will heal their backsliding. I will love them freely. Oh, if I had time to dissect that word freely. Can I talk to you for just a minute? He says, I will love them freely you see sometimes when people do things for you there's always well what's in it for you what do you want what do I owe you God says I'll forgive you and I'll love you without any strings attached you don't have to love me back I sure want you to but I love you just like you are. How many's glad he'll love me just like we are? So he said, I will heal their backsliding. I will love them freely. My anger has turned away from him. In other words, I could judge him. I could sentence him. I could condemn him I could punish him but instead I'm going to hear that call Lord restore unto me your salvation I've messed up I've been slacking I've been giving in but I realize it's not working so will you restore me? Will you create in me a new heart? Will you not take your presence from me? Because if you will, I will teach transgressors their ways. I will proclaim your love to somebody. Friend, God loves you. And one way you know that he loves you is he's real with you and he don't play with you. When you're wrong, he talks to you. Amen? He'll kind of start tugging at your heart. He'll kind of napping, knocking on your heart a little bit. And sometimes, some of us take a slap in the back of the head, don't we? But aren't you glad he does?